The 2019 novel coronavirus epidemic that started in Wuhan, maybe it is not a prediction, but it is in preparation as a precautionary principle. As a precautionary principle, we have to be prepared that this particular epidemic may be about to become a global epidemic. This is not a certainty by any stretch of the imagination, but there is a not weak, or there is not insubstantial probability that this might happen. Hello everybody and welcome back to the MedBros channel and today we're going to be talking about the really big news going around about coronavirus. We're going to be going over everything from what's going on and why is it so scary to so many doctors around the world and what can you do to prevent catching it. So what exactly is going on with coronavirus? Well, it seems to have all started around December 2019 in Wuhan, China, and it seems to be localized down to an animal market there. People started showing up in hospitals with respiratory symptoms. People started collapsing in the streets, uh, brought into the hospital. Everyone kind of that was brought in during that time seemed to have some kind of connection to this Wuhan market area. As of today, January 27th, 2020, there have been over 2,700 people infected by this virus and over 81 deaths have been confirmed at this time. So it seems like the virus has reached Australia, France, and the United States with over 100 people in 26 states currently being monitored and quarantined. There are also five confirmed cases in the United States, two in California, one in Arizona, one in Illinois, and one in Washington. And these have all been related to travel to the Wuhan area. So what the hell is coronavirus? Well, this is not an entirely new virus. We have heard of it and seen it before, and it usually causes cold-like upper respiratory symptoms. And this virus has a bit of a nasty track record. It was responsible for the SARS outbreak, which you might remember from 2002 to 2004. It was also involved in MERS, which is the Middle Eastern variant of this, which was related to camels. And now there's this outbreak called NCOV or novel coronavirus, which is responsible for this 2019 outbreak. Coronaviruses are RNA viruses. That's the genetic material that they use and they're called coronaviruses because corona means a garland or halo or a crown. And it was called that because the virions, the actual infected particles, actually look like they have these projections that look like a royal crown or a solar corona, which I think is actually quite beautiful. Nerd. <laughs> so the structure of these viruses are composed of a spike envelope, membrane, and nucleocapsid. And each of these parts plays an integral role in the infectivity of this virus. Many parts of the virus structure like the envelope or the membrane are used to avoid host immunity. So it kind of avoids our cells trying to kill it. But there's this important part of it called the spike. And why this is so important is this is what allows the virus to invade our cells. And usually our bodies are pretty good at fighting off various pathogens. But what gives us trouble is when these nasty bugs start mutating. And specifically, when you start mutating something like the spike protein that lets these viruses get into our cells, it's kind of hard for our guys to fight them off. So as they're varying these spike proteins, there's different ways that they can come in and infect our cells with these mutated spike proteins that we can't defend ourselves with, and our cells get infected and it spreads like wildfire. And on top of that, viruses can be very tricky. In most cases, such as the flu, you can transmit it human to human. I can sneeze on somebody and they can get the virus. But what you'll see historically is when the viruses transfer from animals to humans, there can be devastating effects. Whether it be SARS, H1N1, or Ebola, it's some kind of virus that's mutated and it comes from an animal and gets transmitted to a human and then it just wreaks absolute havoc. So what happens is an animal will be infected by this virus, the virus will undergo a bunch of mutations to make it super nasty and unfortunately it will be able to be contracted by humans and then a human will contract it via eating the animal, coming into respiratory droplet contact with the animal or other kind of very wrong droplet contact with an animal. <laughs> And from there, it's gonna spread from human to human to human to human, and you can see how you get things called epidemics, where you get this massive spread of this disease that originated from this single animal that was infected and had a mutated virus, which is just mind blowing if you actually think about it. And that spread is gonna depend on what kind of route that virus takes. Is it due to sneezing on somebody? Is it due to uh, fecal matter? Is it even due to sweat like Ebola? Could have been transmitted which was terrifying with something like ebola if somebody infected sneezed on a pencil and then somebody else came into contact with said pencil and that pathogen somehow got into their body into the bloodstream into whatever they would have had ebola so some of these viruses absolutely horrifying 
And it's very important to recognize how these viruses are transmitted so we can prevent the transmission to ourselves. For example, something like TB is transmitted through respiratory droplets, so an N95 mask is okay. You don't need to wear an entire giant suit when you're around these individuals. Versus something like Ebola where you better be in serious lockdown, airtight, every single orifice must be absolutely impenetrable to Ebola. So in terms of coronavirus, what actually happens once you get this virus? What is so scary about it? Well, let's look at some of these symptoms. You get fever, fatigue, dry cough, shortness of breath. What does that sound like to you? Just like your simple upper respiratory infection, you would think nothing of it. It's kind of non-specific symptoms you would get. And the worst part about it is there's a week long incubation period, which means you are asymptomatic carrying this virus, possible to spread it to other people for a week. Something like that is very scary. Most of these people that we're seeing in China that were infected by coronavirus are coming in and they have stable vitals. Their white count is low, their lymphocytes are low. Signs that we look for that if this person is infected, they weren't really there. So these kind of things make it very scary to diagnose people, especially when you have people quarantined at airports and in the streets and you're holding on these people as possible uh, individuals carrying this virus from this Wuhan area. How long are you gonna keep them? It's a week long incubation period and you really have to watch these people for development of fever, dry cough, etc. But then bam, you get hit with pneumonia, kidney failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and it's not looking too good. Viruses can have this effect because they stay in your body, they incubate, they replicate, they activate your own immune system to kind of release all these cytokines and all these inflammatory factors that end up backfiring on your body and you get this inflammatory response that just shows up out of nowhere. Specifically in acute respiratory distress syndrome, you're gonna have a huge inflammatory response in the alveoli of the lungs and the surrounding parenchyma and it's gonna make it very difficult for you to have good gas exchange between your lungs and your blood. So you're not gonna be oxygenating very well. This will ultimately lead to your organs getting under perfused and not getting enough oxygen and you will end up in a coma and die and have multiple organ failure. And as with many viruses, the treatment is supportive. Oxygen, fluids, keeping them comfortable, aka we don't have a treatment for it. <laughs> There's no specific medication for this disease. There's no specific drug that targets this specific virus's replication, but they are working on a vaccine, but that doesn't exist right now either. So the name of the game right now, and usually with viruses, is all about prevention. Currently, there are only five US airports accepting flights from Wuhan with some serious quarantine going on. What makes this really tricky is they're holding people to see if they're gonna develop anything like dry cough, shortness of breath, all these non-specific symptoms that might not even be coronavirus. They might just be another illness. They might might have had this before. There's a lot of confusion and it's very difficult to work around this stuff, but they're doing a great job quarantining a ton of people and monitoring a ton of people, trying to keep it all under control. Wuhan, China itself and surrounding areas, absolutely on lockdown. There are massive amounts of people uh, fighting for supplies, emptying out Costco's. You can see in this footage, it's really disturbing to see some of this. People are fighting over supplies. People are super angry. There's huge roadblocks, so much congestion. They're emptying out all the stores here. Absolutely crazy stuff going on over there. People fighting over the last bag. This poor woman trying to get one bag. She says, hell no, these both are mine. Get your own. Costco's all emptied out. Absolute havoc. There's still two pieces of meat. He didn't want them. I don't know why that looked good to me. Here we can see healthcare providers themselves are putting themselves at risk and catching the coronavirus. And while scientists are on a race to try to figure out a vaccine for this thing, what can we do to prevent ourselves from catching this? scary disease going around. My personal next step is to grab all my supplies, grab Starkey, grab all the garbanzo beans I can from Costco, go into my backyard and dig a hole as deep as I can. I'm gonna sit there with my shotgun just in case any of this coronavirus wants to come down here, I will be ready for it. And when I crawl out in a couple months and if everyone's still alive, I will know how I have made it. If I do not, I will be the lone survivor on this apocalyptic Corona beer day planet. And of course, I'm just kidding, guys. The number one thing to do is do not freak out, especially if you're over here in California or anybody else in the States or Canada or wherever you're at, away from Wuhan, China. Relax. Corona Beer Day is not going to come out there and get you. In all honesty, guys, the best thing you can do is number one, obviously stay away from Wuhan, China. And if you do know somebody that's traveled there, or if you have traveled there in the past, make sure they're aware for any non-specific symptoms, cough, shortness of breath, anything like that. You need to contact your local authorities, a local hospital, wear a mask before you go visit them, stay away from other people who can possibly contract 
anything from you. And the rest of it is your typical staying a clean human being. Please cough and sneeze into your arm. For God's sakes, it is 2020 and the amount of times I see people literally sneeze in their face and then try to shake my hand, I want to literally just slap them in the face instead of shaking their hand. Do not sneeze into your hand. Do not cough into your hand. Be a normal, clean human being and do it into your arm. Wash your hands before you eat. Wash your hands when you get back into your house from a public environment. These are simple, basic things to stay clean. That's the best thing you can do to not catch this deadly coronavirus. And that as of now is the overall big picture, really scary stuff actually going on in Wuhan, China. My heart goes out to those people and all the healthcare providers putting their lives on the line as well. Mad respect for everybody over there. Everybody pitching in to really fight this coronavirus. We'll make it through this just like we beat Ebola, H1N1, SARS. We've been through it all and hopefully we get through this one quickly and it goes away because it is very scary to see this kind of stuff. Lives are being lost and it is very sad. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck out there.